Hello quilters. It is time to look at everyone's rainbow morning star projects from the 2023 AQS and AccuQuilt Along series. So stay tuned for plenty of great quilts and inspiration. Quilters, I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert, and welcome to the show and tell for the Go Morning Star Rainbow AQS and AccuQuilt Along series. Today, we're going to show off some finished quilts by those who participated in the Quilt Along. Now, Miss Pam is missing today because she is headed off to Long Beach for the quilt show there, but I'm here and I'll be answering as many of your questions as, I, as possible. So be sure you ask those questions in the comment section from wherever you stream our show. Now quilters, in case you're just joining us, our introduction to this Quilt Along series was back on May 24th at the end of the AccuQuilt Live that day. I kind of broke up the party and came in for a little introduction. Then every week of June, starting on June 7th, we broke up creating this pattern into four parts. Now it's beneficial to watch each of the shows in order if you're just getting started with the Go Morning Star Rainbow Quilt. So be sure to check them out on AccuQuilt's video gallery, Facebook, and YouTube pages. Okay, we're gonna jump right in and get started by taking a look at my quilt hanging behind us. Now, Miss Pam, she left town without handing over her quilt, so we don't have it here. So mine is hanging behind us. I got the borders on last night. Now, hopefully you tuned in a little early to see some of your fellow quilters projects running before the show, and we're gonna look at those again before the show ends. If you're just finding this quilt along, we are using the AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group and other social media platforms to stay connected with each other and see what everyone's been creating. Everybody using the same hashtag, hashtag AQSOS. Before we get started looking at some quilts, I'm gonna check, Miss Emily is not with us today, so I'm gonna be checking for questions. And I saw one right beforehand asking about, uh, Miss Roxy was asking about heat temperatures, your dyes, you don't want to expose your dyes to. So if you've got a dye, it's summer, it's hot as heck, or we like to call it hell or hot sometimes, Miss Pam does. And we don't recommend leaving them in your car for a long period of time. Um, there's glue involved that can break down that glue. Uh, so you don't want to leave them in your car all day just like you wouldn't leave your vinyl record, if anybody remembers vinyl records, or tapes or anything else. In a little while, it's not gonna be a problem. Let's see what else have we got. Uh, Michaeline says, what's the best way to travel with dyes? I am going to a retreat in Michigan and traveling over 200 miles. I'm taking a number of dyes along with my Go Big. Well, you know, we have a great rolling tote that will fit your Go Big and some of your dies. It's got a pocket on the front. You can fit some inside. It also has a pouch on the back that'll fit an 18 by 24 rotary cutting mat or some of your long strip dies and mats. So that's a great thing for travel if you don't have one of those yet. And let's see. Okay, I think we're up to go on and take a look at everybody's quilt. So remember, keep posting those questions. They'll let me know what they are. And let's get started looking at some of your projects, starting with Sharla H. Now, I love this picture. I picked it out because she's actually sewing right along with us on her laptop, right there on her sewing table. Isn't that great? We've got such a wonderful group of quilters participating in these quilt alongs and it's just so fun to think that we're all working on this project at the same time together. All right, next up we've got Rose and how she got started. She's got her pattern printed out, she's got her dye right there, and she's got all those yummy purple and pink batiks. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. 
Our next picture is from Georgia. Now, Miss Georgia was really clever because she's used ombre fabric to help create that rainbow or gradient effect for her project. Isn't that clever? She's just letting the fabric do all the heavy lifting. Now, here is a quilter who really jumped in to this project. So Debbie B had her top done by June 15th. Yes, she had her top done by June 15th. I love how she placed her fabrics. It definitely, she placed her pinks and her blues. So you get that overlap um, look with the purple fabric that she put in there in those squares and those half squares. It's just stunning, Debbie. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look back at those quilts. If you missed them at, before the show, we're gonna run the quilts that we looked at earlier and we'll take a look at all of them together. So here's Angela S. I love the sunny center here and all those greens, isn't that pretty? Oh, Candace, I love the scrappiness of this. I love that she used prints and that dark background. Here's Chris R, good clear prints. I love that kind of peachy orangey color. Deanna, we're gonna look at Deanna's a little later. Look at this sunflower effect that she created. Here's Deanna's again and how she pulled it all together with that sunflower effect. Here's a closer look at Debbie B's that we just looked at, our little early bird. Gail W, Gail did a really great job again of, of those really clear colors. They're a little bit more muted. Jan's got kind of a flower look going here in hers as well with batiks. I love Joanne, look at the green and white. So you don't have to do all the many colors, you can just do two colors. And here's Karen J's, we're gonna take a look at this. Both of Karen's quilts coming up soon. Oh, this is Karen M's. I love these blues, aren't they pretty? Laura P, so sunny. I'm gonna talk about hers as well because I think we have similar background fabrics. Lisa S, look how that center pops. Lynn K, I really like, Lynn, your, your secondary design really shows there in the center, doesn't it? Here's a completely different look on fabrics from Ms. Joey B. Nancy's done an interesting thing. She's arranging her squares a little differently. Isn't that fun? You still get the look of a curve though. Pamela got her top done. Isn't that pretty? Those corals in the center are gorgeous. Okay, Tracy S. made me want to start all over again with all of her blues that she used. I loved Cindy's black and white fabric choices here. Here's Karen J's other quilt. So we're gonna look at these two side by side coming up. Isn't this fun? Here's how Rose got started again. Oh, Mickey had a really fun take on hers. Oh, I just love all of them. They were so fabulous. Well, we've got some in the studio with us too, some other samples besides my top. So let's take a look at those. And we're gonna start with the original. So this is the, okay, I've got a, there's a mark on the ground. I don't usually get to hold up the quilts because I'm short. So this is our original Morning Star rainbow quilt. And you can see that this is the one a lot of people base their quilts on. This is what's pictured in the pattern. And then we have a two color version with a little thread on it. And this is the contemporary Morning Star. So Pam created this one with just two colors and shockingly, she used all grunge. So this is all black and white grunge. 
Again, this is the Morning Star Contemporary Quilt, a different take on the same Morning Star die. And then we've got one more to share. And this one was made by Marianne Fontana. It's the Morning Star Tricolor Quilt. And I'll hold this up. And then we've got a blue, the blue grunge on the background. Isn't that pretty? It really, you can see some different color placement and she really, the design looks different. Again, it's just the morning star. So isn't that fun? Very different looks. Well, I think we need to look at some more quilt pictures because there are so many great ones. So let's get some more up on the screen to look at. This is from Diana S. She's got hers quilted already. Look at that. And it's stunning quilting. But I also really love her color choices on this one. Oh, here's Corrine B's. Now this was really fun. This reminded me a little bit of the one that I made for my daughter and son-in-law for their wedding because it was all lots of the pinks, the graduated pink colors. Now, Corrine was brave enough to admit that she had to re-sew a block because a triangle was misplaced. And you know what? I had to do the same thing actually more than once. And one of you all picked up on it on the picture that I had, which was fabulous. And thank you very much because it saved me in the end. All right, we've got one more. Here's Laura Pease. Now, we talked about this before. Wait, I have to log into my computer. Um, she, her green is like the reverse of my background. So my background is white with almost the same print, and it's just really fun. And then here's Cindy L. I really like, this is that black and white fabric. So they're like opposites of the two fabric. One is white with the black, and then the black with the little white or gray on it. I just think it really changes it up and it's super stunning. All right, I think we should look for more questions. Let me take a look here. Let's see. Does this pattern involve Y seams, says Susie. Oh, absolutely not. There are no Y seams at all. The cool thing about this is that you get that feel of those circular designs with just straight seams. And really, as long as you can sew a quarter inch seam allowance, if you're using the die to do the cutting perfectly for you, this is gonna be a breeze. What else do we have? Oh, grunge. Grunge is a kind of fabric. The designer is basic gray and it's made by Moda. And let me pick this up. We talk about it a lot and that's a great question. Thank you for stopping me on that. So let me just throw this down here and we'll look at it. Grunge is like a, a solid that's been painted on. And you can see it gets some movement on it, some gradient colors. This one's got a lighter kind of turquoisey and a little purple pulled in. And I love it, Pam loves it. It's something that transcends modern to traditional. It's a great blender because it'll pick up those different tones. And if you're somebody who likes to have a little movement in your fabric, this is a yummy way to do it. Now quilters, some of you, oh, I should check for another question. Let's see. Okay, great. Now, quilters, some of you may remember that we announced there's going to be a total of five quilt alongs this year with AQS. And our Morning Star Rainbow Quilt is the third one. So you don't have to wait very long though for the start of number four. We are going to be revealing the next project on Pam's July 19th AccuQuilt Live show. And we'll get started with the project on Wednesday, August 2nd. Now, I know you wanna know what the project is, but you know what? I happen to have had a lot of fun dropping hints the last time, so I decided to do that again. Now, my first clue for you is in today's AccuQuilt blog post. So be sure you hop over to the AccuQuilt blog and check that out. Look for more clues coming up in the AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group over the next two weeks, and we'll see how soon somebody guesses this project this time. 
All right, I can't help myself. I love these so much. Let's look at some more quilts. Now this section, we're gonna talk a little bit about borders because this really opened up the opportunity to do some fun things with borders. So here's Mickey W's and she used what I think are probably her scraps from the center of her quilt and did very narrow strips. They probably finish, looks like maybe they finished at an inch or an inch and a half. And then used, um, she pieced some cornerstones using her dies. It's really fun. Okay, here are the two quilts that I talked about that we're gonna look at that Karen J made. Now A, I love the shed that she used as a background. You know, quilters, taking pictures of your quilts is not an easy thing, and I love this for a background. I wish I had it. Um, and look how different they both are. So she did the one with the bears first, and that's got those really clear rainbow colors, and the bear is from the Northwoods Medley, and I love how he is gradiated and just wanders around the outside of that quilt but then she was a little inspired by Miss Pam and she used Halloween fabrics to create her second one. And it's got a flock of little floating ghosties from our Go Halloween medley floating around the border of this one. And they're on those setting triangles. So she didn't actually add extra border to this one. She just enhanced those setting triangles with the little ghosties. I think it's so cute. All right, we've also seen some flowers. We talked about some of them in the montage, but here is what Deanna S. started with. We're gonna take a little closer look because she actually made her four center blocks the center of a sunflower. Aren't they, isn't it great? So then what we saw in the montage, and if you missed it, we're gonna run it again at the after the show. That showed she did yellow and white box out for the outer petals and then kind of a background. Isn't it stunning? I love it. Now, don't forget, you wanna check out today's blog. Now I've written a post each Wednesday during the quilt along to go over the details from the day's event. Plus you can find more tips and tricks there and as well as the videos from the show. Now today's post is gonna highlight some of the quilts that we didn't talk about here, so you wanna be sure to go check it out as well. Plus remember, you're gonna find your first clue on our next project there at the end of the blog. So you gotta read all the way to the end. AQS has been updating their original blog post and you can check that out as well. And remember that that very first one from both of us had rotary cutting directions available as well. Now AQS has got a new post that they're gonna have coming out covering every single one of your projects that they can find with hashtag AQSOs on it. So you wanna be sure to check that out as well. And remember, use that hashtag when you're posting your own pictures. Okay, quilters. So before we wrap this all up, we've had so many great pictures that we've looked at but it wouldn't be right if we didn't give something away, right? So we want to announce the winner of today's giveaway. The lucky winner of $100 in AccuQuilt reward points is, drum roll please. Up, oh, it's Valerie S. from Beasley, British Columbia, Canada. Congratulations. Oh, Valerie, that's fun. All right, let's check for questions here. And I think we're pretty well caught up with our questions here. Somebody had a question about the wish list and how others can see that. And I am not an expert on our wish list. So um, perhaps customer experience team can take that one for me because I don't want to misspeak on anything. But we do have a wish list option available on our website. Now, don't forget, there's plenty of special offers available for you on our website. To get your order in right now, you can open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com party to see the current deals and place your order. But here's a tip. You don't wanna forget to order July's Die to Try Die, which is the Go Tea Party Die. 
So let me show you, isn't this adorable? So the die includes the teapot and the top. It also has a tea bag shape and a little tag for it. And here's one. Here's a little uh, wall hanging that Santa started for us. I think I'm gonna take it home and finish it. Isn't it cute? Super simple. It's uh, been appliqued onto an eight inch finished square and two inch finished squares around the outside. Super quick, but I have to tell you, the Tea Party Medley is selling fast. We actually snuck this one out a little early at the end of June. There it is on the screen. And because the 4th of July was yesterday and it was Tuesday, so we didn't do a show. So if you want this one, it is selling fast and you can only get it during the month of July or while supplies last from either AccuQuilt's website or your local AccuQuilt retailer. All right, let's check and see. Oh, Cindy, you're asking what stitch length do I use? You know what? The default setting on my sewing machine. I don't typically monkey with my stitch length. The only exception to that really is if and when, because it doesn't happen very often, I do foundation paper piecing. That's the only time, and then I will shorten that up. Otherwise, I leave it on the default setting and just leave it that way. I don't monkey with it. Let's see, who else has a question? Oh, Sharon H. wants tips on getting her points to line up. I don't know if that's all points or just the Morning Star Rainbow Quilt. So let's just look at the Morning Star Rainbow Quilt. Let me, well, it's, it's very pretty back there. Let's grab our quilt here and see if we can take a look. So well, it's gonna be easier on the other one. Let me grab the actual Morning Star. And I'll tell you, I noticed that they lined up really easily for me. But Pam had a couple of tips that she found helpful. So the first is, remember we're building triangles. And these seams, you're gonna start with the base of your triangle, like any good pyramid, you need a good base, and press those open. When you press this one on top, when you sew this one on top, these, the ones that have the corner units attached, she pressed this seam down, pointing out. And this seam, we both pressed towards the outside as well. Then if you take and press this seam towards the top of your pyramid, you can actually nest these two seams. And anytime you can nest your seams, that's going to help them line up. It, when you press one direction and the other piece is pressed the other direction, they almost kind of lock together. So then when you sew your two halves together, remember this is basically a four patch, right? But here's one piece, here's another piece, here's another piece, and here's the other piece. So you're gonna sew these two together, these two together. If again, you press towards this way, in this way, you can nest that center seam and that again is gonna help you get that perfect point. So hopefully those are two things that are gonna help you out. How do you get applique stitching? Oh, we talked a little bit about applique stitching. So there's lots of ways to stitch down your applique shapes. So let's grab my teapot here. So I have not stitched this down yet. So far, I just had the fusible on the back and I pressed it on. So what am I gonna do? Well, let's talk about my options. I've already got it pressed here, so I'm not gonna use my embroidery machine. Because if I was gonna use my embroidery machine, I would want to start with a blank canvas. I would wanna start with my blank square because the embroidery machine and the embroidery is going to stitch the outline for you of your piece for you to line it up perfectly, press it down, and then it will go back and do that stitching. So 
With this one already fused on, what can I do? I can do a raw edge stitch and just do my straight stitch just inside the line, which is probably what I'll do with this. I could also use a decorative stitch on my regular machine. I could do a zigzag, a blanket stitch. I've done that a lot. Um, on black, it doesn't usually show up unless you use maybe red to do it. You could use a, a zigzag. You could use anything you wanted to. Or if it's going to be used as a wall hanging, like this probably is, then you can just layer it with your batting and your backing and quilt just right over the top because that's just gonna hold it down. It's a wall hanging, it's a little mini quilt. If you're not gonna be washing this all the time, it'll be just fine. So those are some ways to finish your applique shapes. Let's see. Oh, okay. I guess we're going down the embroidery rabbit hole today. So uh, Rebecca wants to know how you download the embroidery files. So, you're going to go into AccuQuilt's website and you're gonna to need to be logged into an account. Anytime you wanna download something off of our website, be sure you're logged into your account because otherwise it doesn't have anywhere to go. So you wanna go ahead and go in and then if it's a for purchase, you'll put it in your cart and download it. If it's one of the free ones, again, you're gonna be able to just click the button and download it. It's gonna go onto your computer most embroidery machines, like mine, will use a flash drive. So I like to save my format that I need onto my computer and then download it, what I need, onto my flash drive and take it to my computer. So that's how I do it. Let's see if we've got any last questions popping up. I think we're good. Okay, well then I think it's time for me to go get ready for our next event. We've got an event, special event tomorrow with our friends from Dime, that's Designs and Machine Embroidery. We hope that today's show and tell was just what you needed to help inspire you to complete your Go Morning Star Rainbow quilt or to make another one. Now again, our next Quilt Along series quilt project will start on August 2nd and I will be popping in on Miss Pam's show in just two short weeks. That's July 19th to announce the next project. So you can gather up your ties, get your supplies ready and be all ready. We are excited for this one. So be sure to check out today's blog post for your first clue on this next project. We'll see you next time.
much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Signing up for our events means you're entered to win a door prize that we'll give away during the show, so you'll want to tune in and see if you won. Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips and tricks and inspiration galore. Next time we'll be launching two new dies that are sure to help you get started on holiday projects. Be sure to join Miss Pam every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. These events are always a lot of fun. Next time, Pam will be making one of the patterns for the Go Tea Party die. You don't want to miss out on following along. And don't forget, tomorrow on July 6th, we've got our event with designs and machine embroidery at 11 a.m. Central Time.